My name is Avery Denny, and I've been working here for um, 35 years. Um, I kind of like threw my hair here and got older and younger. So people say that I'm still getting younger. So I spent 35 years here and I looked at the instrument, put some devices to you. I'm originally from Low Mountain Pinion, west of Chengdu, about another 35 miles. And um, I work here, I work here, and um, I'm a, a teacher, uh, instructor, professor. But I didn't have a uh, formal education. I go to school, board to school is what I did, and BIA quality, and so BIA product, and um, but at home, where I come from, uh, born in the early 50s, 1955, 1956, 19. 57, 1958, I was born during that time. And my mother and my father, they raised me up in a hoka with no running water, no power, no electricity. So, where the highway in, that's where Navajos, real Navajos, that's where they come from. And real Navajos. Or not born on the on the highway and cities and towns. So where I learn is at home in the Hoka. So our one time I was over there on uh, registration and um, at the registration all these um, math teachers and science teachers they're all like, hey Mr. Dunn, take a class. He said, he said I, I, don't, I don't need that kind of class because it's school. What I need here at the next at the next college is I want to learn how to do. Um, I already know how to do this ceremony, but what I'm interested in is a nage, a I want to learn a different ceremony besides what I know. What do you have to offer along that line? And uh, I want to learn to be a let's say a nage, a shiki, a dash and I want to do that ceremony. Do you have? To a class for that. Get out of here, go back to your own section. <laughs> so, so it's kind of different. Our education is way different. So coming from that, I come from a world where even perspective or change are different. So I put Eta. So just imagine that. And, uh, our belief is totally different. Navajos. Uh, people say we worship the same entity like God. And Navajos don't think like that. Our belief is totally different. The one that's from Europe, a different country coming over here, has a totally different principle and standards and morals. Here, as Navajos for thousands of years, they have a different concept, they have a different belief, they have a different understanding. La. See? Right? We don't worship the same God. We're different. We, we have relatives that we say, Shamanda Masan. We live here. We don't separate men and spirituality. We still put it together, and that's how we believe. Being connected, and um, so that's what I bring to the new college here. And um, I, like I'm trying to say, I'm a a traditional healer. A, a call it a hatashi, a chanter. A singer, and 
I teach students from that frame of mind and from that education of traditional native education. So I And um, a lot of stuff that we cover in class is basically a Navajo culture, Navajo issue, Navajo perspective. So, so one day I work with people in different areas and um, working and writing and so I I start I or give an assignment to do a a project with the tobacco initiative and um, and I decided that it was okay to do something with that so that's where the Navajo Nation they gave me an assignment with the um, health promotion and they gave me the assignment and we wrote a piece. Um, this guy right here, Mike, the doctor, Mike Verma and um, my sister too, um, Adrian. So I started the piece and then we started to edit and we came up with that paper. And the Navajo Nation will use it and to promote tobacco use and what is a protocol, what is the standard of what, why is it important for us to um, inform the public, especially young people. So that's what we are going to do today and try to bring that education to all of you. So that's my introduction at this time, so I'll give it back to over here my other colleague. So we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, as you can see. They, they gave them the least experienced teacher here at the time in the most complicated classroom. Because that's what the kids were saying to the mom. And uh, my wife, Adrienne, is also presenting with us as well. But she's, she's feeding our son, Abahi, so if you hear screaming, don't. So, welcome. Uh, I, if you guys are... Uh, New to Salem, visiting, welcome. I hope you like it. You love it. <laughs> this is your home, and welcome back home. It's good to see these buildings full of people. She's talking a lot of good thinking going on around here. Uh, yeah. I'm from the Budapecha tribe. I'm a refugee of the Navajo Nation. <laughs> I found my way within the sacred mountains, and uh, my relatives all here made a space for me to uh, sit down in the fireplace, and uh, I love it here, so this is, this is my home now. Um, <coughs> I've been working with Mr. Denny for, I think, eight, nine, ten years. He probably feels like it's forever. <coughs> trying to get rid of me, but I don't need as we get closer. And uh, then I got a job here, so now he just works upstairs, and I get to work right here on the third floor. Um, I am currently the Dean of, Dis of the School of Business and Social Science, and uh, we have about 23 faculty that, uh, that teach business, economics, social science, anthropology, history, political science, um, all the fun stuff. All the other schools, I don't know what they're doing, but we do the fun stuff. Uh, I don't know about your school. This school might be fun, too. Uh, Mr. Denny, the faculty member in the, the School of Finesse Studies and Education. And so, uh, like he was saying, we were working on this not both the Nest Ceremonial Tobacco, um, a, a paper, a presentation, and uh, we're, we're still learning about it. I'm, I'm always going to be a, a student first before I'm you know, so I still consider myself a student of everything that we're talking about. And that's, that's me. Um, hey, there, we got it. I'll take one. One out of three ain't bad. Well, there's this mug shot. If he ever goes missing, you know where to find him. <laughs> this is us. Um, let me introduce my wife. Hi, Hi, a chance to have a sip of coffee. <laughs> I'm fine. How 
is everybody? I'm sorry, I'm doing a little late. I have my son with me, so he's outside having a bottle. But, um, Yak Esh A, Adrian, Rema, Yenishia, Nakar, Dina, and Ashna. Nash Esh is Hadam, Bush is Chi, Kachi, and Dajna, Lalak, Ozafan, and Bush is Chi. Um, I am the executive director of Yewaka Knowledge Distribution. Um, I've done, I'm working on um, an indigenous research methodology that includes scribing, scribing techniques that we're utilizing in capturing stories um, in indigenous language. And we've been utilizing that technique um, when it comes to explaining not Bahane, Ado, Dine Bahane. And so what I, I've been able to do to contribute to this project is I sit, I listen, and then I utilize these skills to capture these ideas. Um, it's a form of note-taking that includes a lot of imagery and color incorporated into it. Um, it's an artistic expression that I feel is organic to who we are as a people. I feel like um, the Dinepazad is very, um, it's very descriptive in nature. You know, it moves with you, it breathes with you. So when you breathe life into a research project, a lot of, you know, incorporating art just seems like the right thing to do. You know what I mean? It takes it to that next level where you're going beyond just a one-on-one -on -one conversation or um, you're taking that interview method you're kind of bringing in this other element that I think is enjoyable for those you're working with, but it's also enjoyable for, um, for those who are trying to transmit information. So um, that's what I do, um, or that's something specific to this project. Um, I do a lot of other work um, with Duna College. I'm also a lecturer um, for the Navajo Cultural Arts Program for um, myself and a colleague of mine. Her name is Jessica Stato. We're teaching a business practice class right now. So that's really exciting, really fun. Um, I'm glad you're all here for a presentation. So um, shall we kick it off? So today... We're going to talk about the creation. We're going to talk about Nafo Bahana. We're going to talk about, um, as you saw in the program, you know, how did this, how did this plant, how did this element save the people, and what things should we look out for moving forward? You know what I mean, what kinds of, like they say, with all elements, all things in this world, you have to have a proper distance to these things, right? You can't get too close and indulge, but you can't keep far away either. That you you kind of prevent yourself from this healing. Um, so that's something we're going to talk about. In this first section of the presentation, we're talking about the creation of the four main elements. <clears throat> so the first element is light and fire. Um, this element was introduced to us, and in our creation story, it talks about how this element came to be and how it was utilized. All of these elements, they have the potential to heal us, but also to harm us. And that's that proper distance that you know, we need to keep in mind as we move forward in this discussion. The second element is water. The third is air, wind that which, you know, was breathed into us and gave us our life and our ability to speak. It's also tied to our prayers. Pedidine, earth, and plants. These seedlings that are spread about, you know, in all of life's processes, everything starts with the planting of a seed. And with that seed, these other elements add to it. They give it life. They help it to grow and spread. Life coming into the world. Um, let me go back here. So, when it comes to water, water is a very, very important element. And I just want to add this one little thing before. So, <clears throat> when talking about water, they say life, life and water are tied together inherently, right? Water reacts to us, water reacts to our emotions. So it's not just this thing that we consume, it's also this thing that gives us life and ability. Um, like those water. 
Mm -hmm. We're just going to kind of like take our turns stuff. Taking turns on all this. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to take it all, and I said, then I'll have nothing to say. <laughs> so we'll give you a little bit to talk about. Um, I, I like to think, I like to, to always remember, recall, remind about the four original foods that came up through the Hachin name. Um, and it's, it's, the, it's the foundation of our bean, you know, the four original foods that were knocked off, then the, the corn that, that came about. I told Avery that when we got to some of this, I'd probably reach out to him and say, anything you want to add to this? So, um, the corn and the beans is the next one. We talk about tobacco at the end of the day, the squash, and then that tobacco plant right there, not to pull. Um, you see this a lot in the, the uh, Sam Payne's see it on that body of Mother Earth, and it's that depiction that right there in the center that Mother Earth has that, that place for that corn, bean, squash, tobacco that are related to the east, the south, and the west of the north. And uh, that relationship, if you guys have ever seen the, the Sam Payne of Mother Earth and Father Sky in relation with each other, that communication that goes on, that seasonal communication that Father Sky needs that rain delivered. Father Sky, I need that sunlight and it's delivered. Father Sky, I need that nighttime period and that daytime period. And it led to that 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 that's that that thriving that we have because of those four original beans. And so that that's how I see it in that that not all being off to that not close that 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 dark, sleeping, regenerative side of regenerates your mind, regenerates your spirit, regenerates all your thoughts, and it has you begin that day. And I don't know if you want to add anything to this. Did I say anything wrong? Um, that's what happened was, I think I was going to hand this to you anyway. Okay. You know this a little better than me. I got this um, drawing up here. In the Navajo world. We believe that there is a first world that was called the black world. And then we have the second world we call the blue world. The third world is the yellow world and the fourth world is the white world. So this is where all these elements come into creation. It is essential so you see the it's a dark world where fire was very, very important to you to have at the time. And in this world too also these insect creatures, insect beings, different kinds of species lived there. And they were they were the ones that are had survive with that fire. They needed heat and they needed light. So then they emerge into, after the destruction, and um, these laws, uh, we call them too also, um, foundation law or fundamental law. Or the laws of the the natural laws were established in this world with these elements by these who existed in there. In the second world, this destruction happened, so they moved into the second world, survived there. So then they have war, the fire, and different conflicts. So right here, a, 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 air. So we have feathered beings living there. So these beings, they make their law establish themselves how to go about in their world to survive. They had to, um, just for example, in this world, the traditional law was established. Because of what happened in the, law, in the first world, so they made the law for themselves. What is their boundary? 
what are, are they allowed to do and what they should be careful with. So they have a set of laws where you cannot go over to the next person's boundary. So right here, we're, even today we have that, if somebody were to get real close to us, we have to push them back like that. So they make those laws like that. And they say, you have your place over here, you're over there, always over here, kind of like the laws of traditional laws. And then, because not after their destruction, they went to the third world. And over there, there was water. Water was essential there. So in this area, it, this is where mammal creatures lived there. So this one, AIA, they established their customary law, where the laws of power equals positive nature, AIA, it was a balanced law. So customary law, there was respect. It was divided among equally to live. And these, these ones are moving into the next world. And that's how laws were established. And after the great flood, they went on to the next world. This one over here, eh, they found out that plants in the earth, Nasan, Eyad, Eyad, and they came up with the common law. So those are laws that we talk about. So, a eh, eh, so, this um, ceremony, Hakad, also fit in here. Different healing ceremony. Healing ceremony. Offering. What is it? Prayers. Had to be made, made a, an offering, peace. So right here, a eh, the tobacco becomes essential, becomes a need to have plant in all of these worlds. Let's say, for example, the hakal here. Let's say there are three here in the black world. These three, there was another three here, ceremony here, became six. Over here, three more healing ceremony went into the third world. So this ceremony with the not oh, were always there with this ceremony in terms of ceremonial healing prayer and nature. So that's where we come across different ceremonies. <laughs> so we as Navajos, we say we have stories, Hanet. And then along with that, we have a song. Songs that tell the story and the song that have the prayer in it. And the gear and the whole concept of healing. And wellness. But wellness is the most very, very much important. So in all of these ceremonies or like that. So then we come across um, over here at the time of the emergence, all of a sudden we have the the corn, the beans, the squash, and the uh, tobacco here. So let's go to the that's that's where the nut oh, over here hey, it's just the way it's written on there. Um, try to talk about that nut oh. So as we know for the fact that um, in both of our schools on the reservation they use the corn stock philosophy. The one that's the white one, that's the corn. 
right in the middle of that, there's a dark circle there. The dark circle represents the time of the emergence, this circle here. So that's the the hole in the ground, beyond that water, way deep down in there, is, that's the, the yellow world. The yellow world is covered with water. So, but this is the fourth world. In the fourth world, all of a sudden, roots came out and then corn evolved, emergence. Plants were the first to come. Man set, set. They emerge into this world. The plant are the ones that have the intelligence. A D G that have the universal mind. So that's the reason why in our educational philosophy we talk about corn. In schools, Navajo philosophy, Navajo education based on corn. The second one is beans. Now, oshe, beans, the plant beans, has a lot of protein, beans, seeds, in, 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 to take care of our blood line. At this Kachiki, we have white, blue, yellow, and black blood cell in our body to use the food. Food sovereignty is what they call in some places Native food, <coughs> traditional food. Aro e yae the squash. E e yae the one that goes down, the one that's like this. E e yae about life, family values. One pumpkin seed whole lot of children. So taking this pumpkin, squash, this one over here, this one over here, and that one creates a generation of people clan. They, they carry the seed. So, those are philosophy and those are structures. But it comes to pass that the Navajos did not have any curriculum for tobacco at then. So, that's where the health promotion, Navajo Indian Health Services, behavioral health, and then from our health promotion with the Navajo Nation, they said, we need a curriculum. We need to come up with a, maybe like a paper, a structure, so that we can talk about tobacco, because tobacco is everywhere. So I'm pretty sure that um, after you drink out of your cup, you're going to chew school and you're going to use it as a spit can. <laughs> or, you know, like tobacco is so, it's, a, it's like a demand. You go to any store and commercial tobacco is everywhere. And, and we have to say that smoking is dangerous to your health. Addiction. So, it's different. Over there, the planes in them, they're sacred tobacco. Over here, Southwest Tobacco use among Indian tribes, all like that. So, and right now, tobacco is in the ceremony. Not oh, is is the name for ceremonial tobacco. How to smoke it and how to use it in a ceremonial setting and how it will be used to nurture your mind and your body to bring healing. Others, the next ceremonial network is utilized uh, as a medicinal herb in healing ceremony and used only when it is prescribed so just imagine a long time ago, not so long ago too, that a grandmother would say in the Hokan, Chacheno, all my kids, all my grandchildren, Chacheno, nada ito. It's been like four years ago we smoked tobacco. It's about time we bring in a 
a person that can utilize their blood, their tobacco, they have to breathe to use a pipe and sit there and everybody will use that tobacco with a song and a prayer. So that's the only time, that's the only time tobacco will be used when it is prescribed for a special person, for a person that needs it for the family. So tobacco, smoking tobacco was not abused on a daily um, chain smoking. So these tobaccos are very sacred to a hot hog, a hot pot. I don't, yeah, I just imagine, you know, if we were to go out there and the collecting uh, tobacco, <coughs> so every nature or every being would have a tobacco. For example, Mahasan Benato. The earth has a tobacco for itself to use that it relies on. Zish, Mako, Tho. Not all. that whole, not all. the bed, not all. of a George, not all. the not all. a a not all. not all. not all. not See? And if you go out there collecting plant, you will go to these mountains and you have to know where they grow. You can't just expect to go up by the lake and it's going to be there. No, you have to search. The person that is the sheep herder, the person that is living out there walking these um, hills and valleys, they are the ones that know where these tobacco grow. So you have to go out and you have to locate them and and you get your supply and just what you need, that's all you get and you don't take the whole thing. You leave some the reciprocity, put something there and bring something back. You don't just grab and take all you all of it. It's gonna be a disaster if you do that. So what happened to these things that are happening in the world, like global warming and all of that? We took so much, we didn't put something back. We just are using it all, so it's unbalanced. So, and so not Just for example, medical marijuana is a good example. Yes, it is a plant. It is not a man-made plant. It grows naturally. It has to be approached in a uh, medicinal way to talk to it and speak to it and collect for just one person to use, to doctor, to treat, and that's it. And after that, no more. That's all. Just think like uh, people like 500, 10,000 people smoking marijuana as medical marijuana. The tobacco is being abused in many ways that it's going to take all your feeling, your emotion. Where's you will have no emotion. You will suffer. It's going to be a pain. So that's when I want to get rich. Somebody's going to come over here. It's everything. I heard you have uh, a cure for addiction to marijuana. And yes, there is a remedy. But it only works for novels. <laughs> One of the Navajos when you say you don't know how to speak Navajo language, you are Blagana, sorry for about that too. Also, it has to be treated with a language, and that is the Navajo language. 
So that's the only way it can work for it. Okay. So these not are, are very essential. So A, B, K, A, 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 they're not in demand yet. So you don't sell these at Walmart on the shelf like this. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to give it back to my colleagues right here. Can I say something? That's, uh, I think that the way I look at these tobacco is, is the way everybody's trying to explain I think is that they're people. And they have their own thought. And they have their own life way. And they need to be treated that way with that respect. And so what he's talking about is this natural law. Sometimes people... Um, I don't know if they, if they see it necessarily the way I do, but to me it's Navajo physics, it's Navajo chemistry, it's Navajo biology. That's what it is. It's, it's when you violate that law, you can destroy Mother Earth. And that's why he brought up climate change. Because people took, 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 they didn't put down that, that offering. And now things are way out of balance. And I, sometimes I tease people and I'll say, you know, Mother Earth and Father Sky, they're supposed to have a communication with each other. They're supposed to say, I need rain, I need sunlight. And the kids, they're all messing around on Mother Earth and misbehaving, and this could be the first divorce where it's the kids' fault. But I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, this is the natural law, and this is this is, might be like novel science. And the traditional, I look at it this way, maybe you disagree with me, I don't know, you can correct me. But the traditional law, I see it as this is the way that those people learn to get along with each other, with the tobacco people get along with the red ant people that get along with the black ant people that get along with the bird people, the people with hooves, the people with wings, the people with gills, and then the people with the five fingers. And then we get up to the to the to the customary, which is this is how I'm going to treat my relatives correctly. And all, all Avery's talking about is the <coughs> custom. The manner in which we interact with our not both relatives, and then finally to this common law area where I, I think of it. I think of it as I know I'm supposed to approach not all but not all people in a certain way. I don't know exactly why I'm supposed to be this way, but I know I'm supposed to. I was taught this way. That might be the common way of understanding it. That I know I'm not supposed to take it all. I don't remember why exactly, but maybe as I get older, I'll figure that out. I'll get into that knowledge of tradition. So I don't know if you want to correct if I said anything incorrect. Um, what what I what I've been thinking about for a long time is um, Robert Yaz used to work here at the Nepalsi Institute. And one day I asked him, I said, "What's the relationship between these bodies of knowledge, natural, traditional, customary, common?" And he didn't quite understand me, so he just went through the history and said, well, in the black world, this happened, and in the blue world, this happened. It wasn't really an answer to the question. And then I asked Mr. Denny that, too, and he's like, what are you talking about? Go away. So, as I think about it, though, I think about it like this. It's like this big, all-encompassing Navajo physics, Navajo chemistry, Navajo biology that if we all knew a little piece of it, we might understand it all. But it's so powerful that it's not really meant for one person to have all that knowledge. And so we can understand that from that traditional point of view. And then we can understand that from that customary point of view. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and to the point where you understand it in that common law level. And in, a, in another drawing, I'll, sometimes I'll just draw this line. And it's supposed to represent Western knowledge. And it's really narrow and it's really linear. Just says, well, there's tobacco and it makes me feel good, and then I get addicted, and all right, that's all I know. And I get, I got it all. I'm done. I got it all. I know everything. And they really don't because if you put it in that perspective, there's this whole four worlds that no one's even begun to ask those questions. So that, that's just my my two cents. My no sense two cents. <laughs> okay, what's this next slide? Next slide. Yep. There we go. So, did she just going to cover this, right? <coughs> uh, yeah. So, the connection between tobacco and our home is, is very clear in the traditional sense that 
when we when we build a home, we're building a life, right? We're laying a foundation, and we want that foundation to be a healthy one. And so, bringing in the ceremonial tobacco into your home is a sacred thing. It's not something you play with or abuse, just like Avery stated. The teachings is really what you're chasing after. It's not so much just the physical um, plant or the smoke or even like the act of smoking tobacco. It's really the teachings that are attached to it. And so all of the things that Avery and Michael talked about, that those levels of respect, those levels of laws, those, um, those practices that we follow, and the history, most importantly, why do we do what we do? You know, these are the things that we, we teach our children, right? And that we, we try to bring into our homes this understanding so that not only are we living, we're not living our, we're, not only are we living our lives on a path, but we're trying to put our family members on a healthy path as well, right? So bringing this ceremonial tobacco into our home is what this, this little part of the lecture is about. So, um... The home, the Hawaiian, it's a ceremonial, matrilineal stronghold. They say the Hogan, the home, is a woman's universe. This is where the woman rules. You know, your mother has ultimate authority, your grandmother has ultimate authority. They lay the foundation for teachings in that home. So whatever, like for example, in my grandmother's home, Everybody knew not to talk back to her. You know what I mean? You don't talk back to your grandma. You get you talk back to her, you'll get whipped. That was just how it was. I saw my little cousin talk back to her once, and everyone was like, oh my goodness, like, what is she doing? And my grandma was probably in her 70s at the time. And my little cousin threw her attitude, and we were just like, and my grandma took off running after her in her dress. Her dress was like <laughs> swinging like this, and her Nikes were all running. And she caught my cousin and she quipped her. And we're like, yeah, like, we're cheering my grandma on. Because in grandma's house, you don't respect her, right? You don't disrespect her. You don't talk back to her. The laws that she put in place for how we carry ourselves in that home was important. And it wasn't just because she wanted ultimate authority or because she thought she was always right. She wanted to give us teachings that she knew we could utilize in our lives as we move forward. Discipline, respect responsibility. You know, these are things that we utilize throughout our lives. And if we pass it on, our grandchildren will behave in that way as well. They'll have a healthy, strong foundation to build on. <clears throat> in the Hogan, there all the different sacred elements are involved. Fire, water, the Hornish gifts, fire poker, food, all these elements that feed us and grow us. They're all present in the home, and we utilize them on a daily basis. And we can either choose to use them as teaching tools, use them as teaching moments, or we can just live our lives with no instruction. You know what I mean? But that would be boring, and that's not who we are as people. I feel like these teachings were given to us for a reason, right? We're given these teachings so that we can use these opportunities to, to, to really pave a path, to be guides in our families, to be guides as individuals to take on that responsibility. <coughs> the dish in the home is important. This is your medicine bundle. This is what you use to pray. This is what you use to heal. Um, I understand a lot of homes don't have this now, but it doesn't mean that these things can't be acquired. It doesn't mean that we can't learn. It doesn't mean that we can't start today. You know what I mean? Um, when, whenever I talk about the home, I talk about doing their teachings, I feel like I run into two things. I run into shame for people who weren't handed these things down in a beautiful bow, you know, just given to them, like, this is for you. And I always tell those, you know, those individuals, it's not your fault. There's a very good reason why a lot of these teachings are not being retaught. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, our education system. It has a lot to do with... <clears throat> social social ills that exist in the world today that prevent us, that really hinder people from sharing this knowledge or seeking it, and it's fear. And a lot of that was beaten out of our parents and our grandparents, and it's not their fault. They went through a horrible situation in their lives, and that kind of pulled that away. 
So these are some things that I feel like are important and I think can be revisited. I think these conversations do need to be had. Um, so that's that little part of this. Um, and that can begin with what we're talking about. Um, this one element, we can use it as a teaching element. Like Avery was saying, this is like the part of the mind that can be healed and this is a tool that can be used. Okay, um, in a actual prescribed ceremony using tobacco as a medicinal treatment. So there are several kinds of tobacco pipe. So these are identical, all there's only two, but the other one we just put um, tobacco in there. So this one right here, the one that one you see is in the tobacco tobacco pipe is it goes like this, that one right there. So oh. And they call this one, it's made out of ceramic, it's cooked. And there is a design drawn on this pipe, like a corn, like this. Or sometimes it's a cloud with rain coming down. Those are female pipe used in a Hoshoji ceremony. You use that for Hoshoji her. It soothes the mind. The other one, you get it, they come from a buffalo horn. It goes like this and then it narrows down like this. So you put the back in here and then you fill it up to about right here inside. So when you smoke it, your nose is right here, your, your, your power, and that's how you smoke it. You sit up, but you go like this to smoke it. So the, the goal is to have that smoke go straight down into your lungs, into your body. And this is used for protection. Na ye e je, not oh, this one not here again. So it's held up like this and smoke like this, sitting up like this, and then it goes through straight down to your lungs and into your bloodstream, into your body. So this one is more um This one is more critical. Um, a stronger tobacco will be put into this one. Sometimes they call it na ye is not oh. So it is applied. And it's, you inhale it and then you stop and then you exhale and you blow. When you blow, you put it on, you just smoke on your, on your body. So in all of that time, in all of that, it, 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 these ceremonies are conducted in the Hogan or one. You light it and then you bless the four directions. To the sacred mountains, to, to the east direction, and then you bless the ground, and then and then you put it on the patient. Oh, correction of healing. And there is actually a law that breaches taboo. There's um, let's say like um, Adishi Betahaneki. The, the law of attraction. Oh, she thought the glitter is purple, green, with all glittering light, and you go up this and you want to get involved into it, and you get caught in it, and, and it's all right there. The law of addiction. She beaches the law. So, habit, addiction. And then there's a law of similarity. When you are in pregnancy, and you see something that's not out of, in the right, and you affect your child by it, and the baby is born with it, that becomes hereditary. The law of contagion, it goes to generation and generation, something that you catch, and it's a law of contagion. So a lot of these things, these are laws of taboo, but people 
get involved and the people become addicted to people or in there. So what is used to bring you out of that environment coming to take you back to that whole God? To take you back to this place, the whole God was the third floor. You had your mind wandered away from your home. With this process, A, you bring your mind back to that whole gun, to that fire, to over here, like the ideal place to be, to be back with, to, to be complete, to be that where your mental and your social and all your mind and everything is all collected back. So, uh, you come back to your home, the ideal perfect place. So that's why we have ceremony in the whole gun and everything is all there, all these elements, divine nature is all in there. So it's where you go back to the home. So, and um, a lot of these um, classes that we have called Navajo culture, Navajo teaching is to produce a child. What is the ideal, perfect Navajo child to be educated in the Hogan? Is it prepared? Is it ready? What is the component of this ideal, perfect Navajo child? What is the component of that Hogan where this child can be taught? Is there just there? to correct mistakes, this taboo, similarity, addiction, all of that. Is there something like a tool to render healing? So, is that really what is the teaching? And, so, and then as far as to have a perfect child, a, 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 to, or you a perfect mother, or you a perfect father, to have a perfect child, to live in a perfect home, in a world where, you know, like everything's all prepared, is it ready? So, is a tobacco pipe in your home to be utilized in the time where, when your father, your son, daughter comes back from school, and uh, they're misbehaving, so there's a discipline right here, and that's, oh, you don't smoke this, they okay, all of that. So that's where, the teaching of the Navajo Nation, the teaching of uh, at the certain stages, uh, if this tobacco can be utilized within prescribed to the family to say that your son is somehow your mind is their depression, confusion, whatever. You need to say like mm, I think he, she needs a tobacco ceremony. But the Hindu yes, can you do that? Out of using that corn, corn pipe. To light this area, there's got to be a corn cob. The corns are all taken out of the time. That corn, that seed, where you clip it out of it to ingest that tobacco. So it has to have a place to have your ceremony. Is it ready to have the and So it, it, uh, it, it has to have the tobacco um, root. Honeshkish is important. And then to provide a story of the first fire. How the eggs are What is the honeshkish for? And I'm dealing with every day and every night people who are suffering from depression and loss of loved one, grief. And today we even elevated our problem to a situation that a lot of our people are being ghostly. Um, they are, their mind is affected by chindi, they're being possessed, there's evil inside them, their mind. And when you talk 
to a girl that's like that, they'll come out and talk like a man to you. Are you fine? It comes out like that. So we have reached that level now. I, there is like problems like that today in our reservation, our position. We have come up from having totally nothing like that, just an epidemic of certain illness, illnesses. And not right now are we dealing with something like that. So in order to treat something like this, to or in order to take on something like this, you have to have a fire. You have to have ashes. You, you need to have a honeshkish in your home and chip in your home. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can actually get a cup of this, put some ashes right there and put it in your, on your shelf, put it next to your bed and all around in your house because that ashes is the one that's going to keep the spirits away or it's a drop place for evil spirit to go in there. When they come in, that's where they drop into that um, uh, recycle bit. <laughs> <laughs> So it goes along, it's a tool that you have in your home, to battle in your home. So to keep the fire located in there. It's really strong. I say Koneshkish is so simple. Okay, the next one. <laughs> okay, not it might be a misspelling, but um, we try to do our best. We're not level um, writing is really hard. If you already speak Navajo, it's really hard to learn. If you are, if you don't understand Navajo, you can learn how to hear it and learn how to write it. But you can read it too, but you don't know what it means too. But not or, and a hache. This is where it could be utilized too. It's a the Navajo Nation also at around about twelve junior high, junior high level between high school and um, um, elementary school. That's when addiction come into into the uh, a young person, a young a young adult. So they they want to use that hache services to render. So in this way, we want to be able to uh, educate the public and the people that's working in that clinical area that they can use tobacco pipe, tobacco use in the tache for the female girls and the male tache. So they can go over there. And during the male and the female puberty, it will be allowed to be able to use that. It is very, very important that we include that. In that time, what is the yin? Again, the fire, the water, the air, and the plant. These four. They come together, they make. Me, they come together, they make my herma. They come together, they make trees grow. It's a sacred, divine creation. So you need these four elements to make something, to create something, to do justice, to cure, to help. Ayo di yin da. So. And um, I, I've seen or I've heard young people, they say, uh-uh. But my psychology teacher says, your mind is real strong and real powerful. You can create your own car in your mind. You can create your own world in the world. You can live in there. All right? This is a young person that does that. It's all illusion. It's all fake. Uh, yet these are Navajo students saying that, Navajo people, Navajo students grow up to say that. But 
There's got to be air for you to breathe. Your lung is important to breathe the oxygen air. You can get the divine presence of that oxygen into your heart and mind. And even just that is an act of faith. It's an act of prayer just to breathe, just to ingest this oxygen that comes from nature and put it into your body and it goes all the way around. And finally, you exhale. When you do that, there's words in there. You go back to nature and the plants ingest it on that corn pollen root of life. So it makes that cycle. So you got to have it. So it's for real. It's for reals. It's here. It's not over there. It's not over there. It's not here. It's here. It's here. So if you can take me to a place where there's no air and I can breathe and I can live and I can stay alive, I'll believe you. If you can take me to a place where there's no water to drink and I can survive for uh, 40 days and 40 nights, I'll believe you. If there's a world somewhere, take me over there where there's no water, there's no air, and there's no food that I can live for one year, I'll believe you. But in the meantime, this is it here. You quite get this is life. So that's the Navajo thinking again. See? <laughs> Even the song goes like that, right? Even the song like that. So, uh, so it says like, Ein <laughs> See, look, it's alive here. So, when these songs are rendered, song words, Navajo words, is healing. So, let me just illustrate some more. So, let's say, like, um, to say, like, that whole guy. And, my son wants to sing to you. Wait, wait, Wow, our language has that soothing, medicinal feature. It's like an epic story recited in this song. It's like a poetry rhymes. It's like very therapeutic, soothing. So just imagine when somebody sings not opiyin in that whole music creation to apply that to your brain, to your mind, to your metal, and it's going to affect you positively. So, in that kache, in the whole thing, that, that we could be able to treat young people back to a mental health condition. So that's the goal for the Navajo Nation to prescribe 
to go. And, and you can say that in English much. You can say that in, in the English language, right? Uh, you can't recite that or serenade that like it would sound like. The only thing that could go is, you know, like you only prescribe a pill to take every four hours where there's an option to cure, there's an option to heal addiction and getting away from these addictions and all of that. It's the background is it. In the, yeah, what is the next slide? Well, it's, it's good because if you, if you hear those mountain songs, zif yim, zif, zif nam it's that, it's, 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 it's those, those medicine soil bundles coming up and planted in these systems in the air abundance, it's a kiss, or it's a air abundance, it's a kiss, or don't go sleep, the venom's up, it's just now the each on you, they're all right there. And so sometimes people will say, hey, where'd you get that from? What are you talking about? And you say, it's in the mountain songs. It's already there, like you say, it's already there. So I just, and, and when you draw like that, we're kind of running out of room here. You got Siskan Jimin, so it's just what we'll see the Venom Talk, and then we put that together, and we make a microcosm of the universe, of the, of the, of the traditional homeland, make a home. And that's, that's what Adrian was saying, that the, the, the male and the female come together, and they build that universe for that female. And they have the east, the south, the west, the north, the doorway, the chimney, that came from the mountain song. And then on the bonnets, it's kiss side. I think about that. I talked about it earlier, like a like a novel philosophy of science. I think of that as photosynthesis, that jahona a, that sunshine, that sunbird, all the way. And it's on lands right there, and that corn, that beans, that squash, that tobacco, it converts that energy into plant life. And that's, that's another way of Avery saying it. Like, show me somewhere else. Where you go to Mars, it's too far away. You go to Venus, and it's too close. <coughs> that we're right there in that balance. To quote our buddy Robert Yazi, he knows what I'm talking about. That balance is just perfect. Not too close, not too far away. So I just, I just add that because that's, that's the way I see this as a... This is the novel philosophy of science. It's a novel philosophy of thinking. It's a novel philosophy of life. Not just, it's, it's already there. Okay, um, this next slide, Iki. Um, there's a whole, these about maybe like 60 pages of writing. And I kind of like did a rough draft and these two went in there and they um, edited it. And the end result, we, we turn it in and um, in this pamphlet, in this um, booklet that we provided, it talks about the Yimdine, how they use these plants before our time as men, human beings. How these Yimdine shared the rules and the philosophy of their use and they shared it with us, how we should use it, how we should perform these ceremonies, and how they kept themselves pure with these vegetation, all these plant life, <clears throat> and how the people, uh, the holy people used the tobacco to keep their minds pure. So they get together and they, they provided that, using these songs that, um, all these songs that we use is not composed by men but like me. They were handed down through time, the way that they sing today, the way that we sing. We cannot compose a new Hojoji sin. We cannot just make up song and do that. And there is an understanding because of that. It said that when you start producing your own music and creating your own belief or creating um, Start making up your own uh, belief or doing ceremony, just making a, a ceremony, making up ceremony. 
We are coming out and we are creating our own world or in, in, in environment. We still rely on these songs that were given to us to use, just like how the holy people utilize it to keep things organized and to keep things harmony. So everything is not mechanical. Not yet, yet. It still has that natural process still going. We have to still rely on the natural order, the cosmic order of life. So Navajos really, real true Navajos, they don't live in the artificial world or they don't use artificial color. We still use the natural color, the natural taste, all of that. The holy people maintain peace and stability by using these songs and how they use it. And they share it with us, provide an application and process, and the use of offering songs, and we call it the Navajo traditional ceremonial healing way. So, these holy people provided us with all of these things. And as a Navajo individual, in all these songs that are out there, all these philosophy teaching belongs to anybody that is Navajo. It's for you, it's yours. Even the song that I just said belongs to all of you. All you need to do is just learn it. You don't need to download and deposit like 10 cents and so on. <laughs> uh -uh. It's yours. It's rightly yours. And, and, so, and um, I guess um, we are to use these things that are given, provided to us, the understanding, the teaching, and the laws that were placed for us to utilize so that we could be well, so that we could be good. The teaching of what shall woman here becomes our, we claim this one. So we live by the fundamental laws, the Hasani. So the natural law. There is no loophole, but there is no loophole in the net in the natural law. You got that? <laughs> There is no loophole in traditional law, in customary law, and common law. Common law is something that's utilized, where all parties come back together and they talk things out. The way the, the courts operate is a person versus a person. And then the jury choose which side is the winner. That did not fix anything. This one is the loser and still like they're upset and all of that. So that's not justice. So in this common law, everybody goes back into the Hokan and they talk things out and they go draw to conclusion at the end. Everybody feels good about it, and they all shake hands, and then there is peace. And hasli, hojon hasli, that's what we operate as Navajo people. And how to live and thrive in this world as a people, as a nation, the history, and the homeland. So, binan hitness, huh? It was quite shell woman that learned from her grandfather. That's how we got it. She taught it to her children. That is us. Identity of the holy people and relationship that was established. That's why we say grandfather. That's why we say Shichin. So there is a... a um, relatively stated. So that's the reason why when Navajos, when we drink pop, there is no relative here. <laughs> we cannot say Dr. Pepper is my grandfather. <laughs> but water is a relative that we can
can drink it like that, see? And um, we have to make relative, we have to be relative to the things that we consume or our body consumes it and our body is all confused what to do with it. So that's why I have uh, this um, spare here. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of it. So it's right here. You know, like. So we have to have a relative with us. And we drink it. And um, something very, very, very. Um, how about if you go to a, a hospital or clinic and. Um, or if they give you like a, a recipe, a ventilator, and you, there's oxygen being produced in the machine, and then they put it on you, and you ingest that man made oxygen. Are we relative to that? It's going to go shock. It's going to shock our, our lungs. Our lungs are going to be terrorized by that. So, because it's not balanced, it's not natural. So that's why we suffer, what? Pneumonia, asthma. So air condition, we are allergic, it's not our air spirit. Even now we have congestion. So people are suffering asthma, pneumonia, today, Navajos. So, all the and I was just thinking about it um, last night, <laughs> and um, it was Yoke Asa Asana Kehe. Our responsibility to hold knowledge and share knowledge, and we have to teach it to the future generation, and wellness is very, very, very hard. It's easy to get hurt, and then the process is eating. It's easy. The first stage, diagnosis. The second stage, treatment. And actually having a, a healing process. The fourth one to get in, that's, I'm better now, I'm well now. How do we stay well? How do we stay in perfect health? How do we learn to take care of our life? Wellness. Because we're already drinking Dr. Pepper. Coffee. And smoking cigarette. So wellness is the, the priority in all of our fundamental law. It has nothing to do with money. You do not get rich by learning foundational law, fundamental law. There's no money in it. You cannot make money with it. But you can live a long time using that wellness. Is that part of the wellness? How about that? It's almost time. <laughs> Proper collection of ceremonial tobacco. Very easy. I guess you could say that. Well, let give it back to uh, Michael. <laughs> uh, Avery, Avery was uh, teaching us about the um, just knowing that protocol again, knowing how those those tobacco people are supposed to be approached, and approaching it with that hadithin and doing that prayer and making that offering. And collecting it, but not where you wipe the whole thing out and you just don't need anything for anybody else. And um, I know that in the past he's taught us about that it's actually supposed to be a medicine person that collects it for you. And they're supposed to analyze it in, that, in a ceremonial way. And like he was talking about earlier, that grandma will make a decision. You know, we live in this hogan and we've been going on and doing good. And it's been about four years, and maybe it's time to bring in a practitioner. Bring that tobacco, do <coughs> that diagnosis, do that smoke, sing those songs, do it in the right way. Um, not something that you're just smoking because you have a, had a long time, you know, as you know. Um, you've been uh, frowning upon the idea of going down to the flea market and buy your white tip and put it in your pocket. 
that you don't know where, where it's come from, you don't know if the right songs were sung when they picked it, you don't know if you don't know if they put down the corn pollen. All of those issues that are unknown to you. See, my son agrees with me. <laughs> that's right. So that's that's um talks about the uh, the, the white shell and the turquoise and the Avalon, sometimes I don't remember in English, and the, and the jet, or the Dothkai, Dothiji, Chit, and Bashidi. That's sometimes I, I, I know it better that way. Um, but, um, you know, I, I've seen it where they put that little pedal, put it all down, make that offering. You make that, make that connection to the beginning. Make them know, like, let them know that I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to accomplish something. Collect. That's you know that's that's it. You know, anything to add? Go to the next slide. Well, if one thing before, um, it's also important to, like Avery said, to establish a relationship mm -hmm. with this plant. So you talk to it, you let it know what your purpose is. Because if you don't, and you just take it, that in turn can harm you as well. So be very careful about this process. It's it's simple. It's smart. And these teachings are here for everyone because healing is the ultimate goal of this work. And these are the violations of natural law now that we're talking about. Go ahead. Okay. What are you talking about? Yeah, so abuses of ceremonial <laughs> tobacco include going to sacred sites and taking it from those places. We don't do that. And so many problems can come from that. And so in order to prevent those things from happening, you know, you don't you don't disturb any sacred sites or any grave sites, anything like that when you're gathering tobacco. You know where you're at, you know where you're going. Um, purchasing tobacco, ceremonial tobacco at a store, uh, flea market, roadside markets, or from a mass producer. The reason why like was stated before, you don't know who gathered that tobacco, you don't know what words were said, and you don't know if any kind of offering was provided. With mass producers, they inject chemicals, they mix it with chemicals that allow you to become addicted, they can get you sick, and when you smoke it, you're poisoning yourself every single time, and they tell us this all the time, you know. Smoking is bad, it's great, like smoke tobacco, Smokeless tobacco is dangerous, it causes cancer, and these are reasons for it. It's a sacred plant that's being it's being um, utilized in the wrong way. So using it for leisure entertainment. Ceremonial tobacco is meant for healing only. Specific times when you can use it, not just for your own entertainment. So just being very careful about that. And then using too much of it. Anything in excess will harm you. Drinking too much water will harm you, you know what I mean? You have to be careful, you have to have that balance. And then, once again, using tobacco that's been, that has not been picked or prayed for can be dangerous. Continuing on with that, um, the traditional ceremony attached to natural. Traditional tobacco is smoked only when it's prescribed. It can only be smoked annually or every four years. It's not to be smoked on a daily basis. And it can be used as an offering when it's not lit. You guys want to add to that? Go to the next Okay. Let's say, like, for example, you bought a, a bag of um, tobacco at the flea market. It's in a Ziploc and it's a mountain tobacco, and you bought it, and then you go home and you take off your um, socks and shoes and you put on a tank top and you turn on the football game and then you roll it up and then you're smoking it up. Your sacred tobacco, right? <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly it's supposed to be sacred and used sacredly, but you are abusing that tobacco and as a matter of fact you're harming your lungs at the same time. So it's out of the content of having a ceremony in the ceremony setting. It's casual. So, so we're trying to um, give message, you know, like for anybody, 
uh, when they when we do this training out there to the public that you have to be very careful not to buy those right now it's almost like commercial tobacco that sits on the table at the flea market or any herbs that's there it has to be prescribed it has to be an offering for one individual need and that need so this should share quite a and that's specially prescribed for that one individual's need, not for the whole nation. So, and so on for all of it. So, why? There are ceremonial tobacco stories, and these are written out like in pages. The story of changing woman taking her children away because of abuse in the world, because of their mind. The children were losing their identity and all of that, living in a condition. So it was time for her to go now, and she gathered these children that have that were homeless that were somehow, you know, with their minds and they, were, and they live in poverty. So let's go, I'll take you to a good place. And she did the story of them and how she treated them, how she made them. And when it was time, she remade them and made them human again, giving them intelligence. They became the four sacred clan, the Kiyahani, Kohani, Kodichini, and Hashishni. The children that she took, took with her. She reconstructed them and reanalyzed and remodeled and re remade those plans, people. And she gave them an, another chance to live. They came back to this four sacred mountain. And out of that, that's where we come back as people, as um, by clans. And then the story of the son, Johanna A. The twins went to see their father. They went to trials and tri tribulations or tests. The, they were supposed to be killed. But with their faith, their belief, their soul, they were saved. And over there, the son, you are our, my real children. So they, they set them down, and then she, he took out his tobacco pipe, and then that's how they were blessed. So that's where these songs come in. Not of be nan johana e penat of be ye nan ye na ye e chi. This one right here was utilized, and then this tobacco pipe was utilized over there. And then this one right here has a a turquoise on this side, and then on the other side, if you were to turn this around, there's another white shell. Those represent the sun and the moon. Just putting a turquoise in there and white shell in there represents Johanna Eight and not of the moon. A chance of this and and these songs are the song pretty good. I can't remember it right now. Um, something like that. I can't remember. Uh, uh, so there are songs about tobacco use, not oh, it on the the top of the it it on its over the car, and how it was administered. The next one is the Nehti Yin and Gila Monster story. This one's very critical. So I guess um, the Nehti Yin translated into a, a Navajo holy man. I guess that doesn't sound right, but. Here our story says the Nehti Hine was traveling around and he left and he went up into in the mountains somewhere and he come across where Kinde as he resided. So that long story that went over there and, and then Adaniyade Kinde as team was over there. But before he got there, before he got there, the Nehti Yen was coming along on the, on the ridges. And then 
He saw some movement. Oh, he's not over there, and the, there's all these tobacco. He went, oh, out of that chipmunk man. The court man would have started to look at all the national people. He saw that. So when he got to Gila Monster's home, out of that Gila Monster man, was all frustrated, or shall I say pissed. <laughs> he was very angry. I go, bad shit. And he was like, somebody's taking my tobacco. I planted, I'm trying to harvest tobacco, my tobacco, the one that I use. But somebody's taking it without no permission. She in the eat, not she in the eat. No haji dad shit. So then, crack it in the neck again, said. But he didn't tell who did it, but. Because then, uh, what are you going to do about it? Then, you know, how are you going to fix it? And then the healer monster said, I want to put a curse on it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what that means is, I want to put a law there. And whoever is stealing this tobacco and smoking it without my permission, without being given an offering, this person will come down with sickness. And until they come back to me, then I have the remedy, I have the antidote. And I can go over there and fix it. That way the person's going to learn not to do that, not to bother with this tobacco and use it, misuse it, need me. And the nephew, he was there and he witnessed how he did that. He went through, oh, I'm going to run around like this, and um, just like Yoda. <laughs> and he put a spell like this. All this thing that, so it was it was there, you know, placed there. So Aro Dhandi Tsado, he the the and he went back and then he went back to his own home. After two days later of that there was a commotion going on over there and and he decided to go over there and then he saw that chipmunk man. It was all, couldn't even move like this, all paralyzed like this. Can't even move. And, and all these people came around with their medicine practicing and being there and all these diagnosing and all that stuff. Here and there, these all ceremony. And all this crowd, and all this crowd, a lot of people sitting there, over a hundred people sitting there. And then the Nati, and the, 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 you know how people are all having the conversation, debating and all that stuff. And then, and that the real soft, he said, um, Can they has tea with the husband? Can they has tea with the husband? So the first time he said that, nobody heard it. The second time, the, finally the fourth time, somebody says, And then who said that? Come forth, Hush, and then, then he steps up. And then finally he said, Can they has tea with the husband? You can do that, you can fix that. So, okay, all right, as the story goes along, the wise fly, another in this word, so. and then, um, but it is don't so must he that went over there, he said, must he, you are needed over there. So, and then the just to give it a hard time, you know, like, well, there's all the bucks in, 100 bucks in here. Like that. There's a concho back here, and there's all these jewels, and here, this is going to be your game. Can you perform that ceremony? Fix it for us. And then, more days, I'll be over there, you know. And he didn't come around. <laughs> Let him suffer hard. What? <laughs> Let people see what happens to a person that steals tobacco. Go to what that is. So let him stop. He's not going to pass. You got to come call to me and I got to fix it. You know, nothing's going to happen to that person. So finally, he will come over there and then the setup and then he will do that tobacco ceremony. And then that person will come back out and then that's where that traditional law is established between the tobacco use and control and how not to abuse it and all the protocols and the laws. Then there's restriction. So that's how remedies, that's how cure is put place in there. And then it, 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 
Okay, the next one, the story about the snake at his home. Hey, that dog, the rattlesnake. First, the rattlesnake is, um, is a genius. All our normal <coughs> ceremony. And Charlie probably knows that, right? <laughs> All the Navajo ceremonies that has to do with lightning, rattlesnake wind, wind away, and all these chant with God night ceremony come from the rattlesnake man. It comes from the snake. That's where it comes from. Reality. in the impossible. So, the holy Navajo man again went over there and he became acquainted with that rattlesnake man. Became his close relative, like a friend, like a buddy. They always hang out and they're always together. And so, one day they were sitting on the hill up there and and then uh, they're all talking away, and they said, um, we should all be buddy forever and ever and ever, you know, I like, had this relationship for, for a long time, you know, like, and then they both agreed to, and then the relative turns around, um, his friend was looking the other way, he's, you see that truck coming around, <laughs> and, and he looks over there, and all of a sudden that relative bites that man, and then, the first ever time invention of a word saying, what the? <laughs> <laughs> so, and that, that Navajo man got bit by that relative. And then he said, you can't friend, I thought we were be together for a long time. And then he comes back. He goes and gets unconscious. So that relative man pick up real fast and then he took some medicine together and then he started chanting and then he revived. That's where the word revive will come from. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to big, make a big tent to do that in there. <laughs> so, then you have you have a healing now. That young man, that rattlesnake man came came back Brett brought that man back to life to live and he was stable and he was all cured and then he said to that man now we're going to be friends forever now we can be alright you know we, we, we establish friendship here but our relatives don't, don't know that you know like maybe over there somebody might be bitten by a so now you can go over there you are immune to that condition now you have my power you can do the same same one but there's going to be an offering here that can on that re put something in there there's going to be a color that's painted on that and then put the back on here and light it for me and then that put it to me like this then you can get my medicine and then it can be applied administered within a ceremony with the soul the application is going to be like this the process if they gave in those and that man can, that person can but get better. So that's how these ceremonies come about. So I don't Later on, in another place, the next day he went to another rattlesnake. And he went into the home of rattlesnake man. And he was trying to look for a light at night that was present over there. And then he would go over there and couldn't find it. So he actually got a, 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 a log tree with a Y. And he put a stick in there to kind of like go like that and measure it to locate it. And kind of use GPS. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the next day he will run over there and try to look over there. There's a little hill over there and he will go over there. There's none. So the last day he went over there and he was trying to look around and then he stuck. He put his arrow over there and he was trying to look around and something told him, just turn around up there. <laughs> 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 and then Joe, which I was I'm 
Put your hand there. Put your hand there. Put your hand there. The door is right there. Turn around like that. I caught your hand in there. You will go into that place. So he did that intuition or something like that. And then he stepped to that place. And all of a sudden he found himself inside that man was at home. His wife right there, his daughter was right there. The rattlesnake becomes very kind, generous, and then she says, Sharon, my in-law, my son-in-law, like that all fast. Like. And he assumed that he was court courting his daughter. He was his son-in-law that sneaking around to go with his daughter. Sharon, come over here. You can be my, with my daughter. She all of a sudden so but they went they did, they went through a lot of Situation, but at the end, the they said the rattlesnake was trying to kill the Navajo man with all these different things. And um, let me give you a real good analogy: is they were serving him. The man was said, "What's that for? That cornmeal? Um, my husband is going to eat it." Okay, so he puts it in his pocket, and then he. Put something around it, like this inside, or just put it in there on the on the front where he's going to eat. Drop it right there. This is poison. And then when he got it over there, and then this being that was talking to him said, "Put, turn it around like this, this direction. You get it. Put it on the opposite side. Then you can eat. Don't eat this section, but eat all of it. Just leave that space because that's poison on it. So the next day he bring the pot again. So um, he put it on the other side so he can turn it around, then it's going to be on his side, then he can eat it and die. But this time he said, today I don't turn it, I just eat from here. Like that, you know. The next day, hey, yeah, hey, ah, what the heck, you know, to put it all around the outside and he's going to eat it eventually, so today I'm going to eat just a little section. <laughs> eat a, a little bit of um, cornmeal all the way around. So. On the last day, yeah, on the fourth day, ah, yeah, yeah. oh, what the heck, you know, he just throw it in there and let it all cover with it. And then he saw that and said, it's kind of cold, it's kind of hot and was, so I can't eat hot. So I let it cool up. You know, when the corn, when this um, blue corn, when it, when it cools up, it, it leaves a, like, um, yeah. I don't want to eat it. So he so said, like, oh, it's cold, so I cut it in the cans, and he puts it up. Throws the top part over there and then he eats it all. <laughs> so it made him all pissed off. You know? <laughs> so if that's not going to work, I'll, 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 I'll do something else. So, so the next day he tried another technique by tobacco smoking. <coughs> he took out his pipe, this is rattlesnake, and he took out his pipe, put it right there, he put out his tobacco pouch. Out of, um, how about your worst of tobacco? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> the tobacco pot and they put it right here. And the rattlesnake, the rattlesnake man noticed that the tobacco pot was almost similar. And all the, the, the pouch was almost similar to tobacco. His was one zipper, one pipe, not one one pouch. Over here is kind of cricket. His, there's two, two compartments here. So he noticed that real, after that real quickly. So that smoke, he said. Okay, you will use mine. So, you're in your mind. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you mine. So, see those things over there? Destruction, you know, like that. Go quick, and then you look over there. And without noticing, he took out the, the horn of the back one, put it in the back of the pot. It's a yee job. So, when all yee yee is that, and it's not open yet, he's going to use it. So, what he did was, he did the same type of thing, so you made that one over there, and he looked this way and switching it around and put his tobacco, his own tobacco in there, and he switched the tobacco pipe and said, I don't know, just and nothing happened to him. He, he eventually took on his own tobacco and he was looking at this. And there was nothing wrong with him, you know. So, and, and he grabs it and said, how come this is not killing you? He took a big old drag like this and then he collapsed. Now he caught. Now he caught. So 
Oh, not for him. It was stronger for him that he collapsed there, and then he was unconscious there, and then they had to come in, and then the he, the Navajo man, had to administer his prayers and so on to bring him back to life. So in exchange for that, as he too, hey, you get Ben Halajish, the the big zebra, the team, the the big ekaa. Uh, these snakes, they have a lot of arrows, bow and arrows. The third one you get in is all these skins of rattlesnake skins, or different types of skins. And they were given things, so he collapsed four times until he finally realized that that's, um, somehow they have to have a relationship here. So that story too also, you know, like, uh, that's where we get our jish ben from the snake. And that's what we use too. In our Ben Harad, in our Shok in Bitsan, then we saw us to Ben Harad, a Ben Hidla, and we saw the Zim attack, a ABC, a Dak, a Yin attack. So, a Adi Ben Harad, Jish, every two of them, Ha Ben Harad, a Bish, a A, a, a Dak, so a Bish, they're given to us like that. So, though we didn't, we didn't just pick it up like this, it was shared to us and utilized it like that. So not Uhuki Kwaga Chanano's in tobacco story. That's how, that's how a lot of these um things that eventually you know pass cross over from the holy people stories and that's how we got our ceremonies. So to pass these type of information to the community, to the public that we Navajo, we have our own stories about tobacco. Or to educate our youth and our Navajo nation about the tobacco use. Is there a mass life? There's too many slides. Yeah. Go ahead. Right there, um, working with this. Um, the Navajo Nation model curriculum. So cultural leadership to promote that initiative. So I have to give credit to Marie Nelson. And they're going to use that as an educational tool. And they're going to put it on their shelves and they're going to give um, instructions or so that's our presentation, so thank you for listening. <laughs>